Our next presenter is Chidozie Lozie from the School of Education with a presentation entitled The New Problem We All Live With. Benjamin Franklin observed that there are two certainties we all live with, death and taxes. But there's a third, educational reform. Because the world seems locked in this continual process of the deconstruction, the reconstruction, the reformation of its educational systems, with policies emphasizing competition and testing as accountability, or what Diane Ravitch likes to call weighing the pig in order to fatten it. All for a prized position atop the global educational rankings. Now, in Australia, what began as alarm over a 44% increase in educational inequality due to socioeconomic status, and then resulted in the political contest over who gives Agonsky the most, has now become a conversation on inequality using such terms as white flight and racial segregation. Startling, but American terms. More unsettling, however, is that this Australian conversation should take place while the US faces its own crisis of resegregation within schooling, back to levels not seen since the 1950s. You gotta ask, is this just a coincidence, or is there something in the only concrete link, link between these two contexts, their policies of reform? Has this globalized reform imported American-style inequality into Australia? Is this the new problem we must all live with? So my research examines educational reform policy in the US and Australia in search for patterns within policy which might indicate a relationship to this segregation, and also looking at how and why policy might manifest in specific ways. Some things I've found. Policies in both countries place policy users, and especially parents, within a competitive arena where education becomes a search for individual advantage and a winner-take-all struggle. These policies also locate disadvantage within specific groups of people, thereby encouraging discriminatory perspectives through such mechanisms as school choice. Using these and other findings, I've developed a model to explain the relationship between reform policy and segregation, but also policy options to address this phenomenon. Now, to be clear, educational reform does not create segregation but it does create the conditions and the perspectives through which we will accept it. Because reforms don't just fix classrooms, they reform us too. Simply put, if we allow people to be educated separately, we run the risk of creating ghettos and hostile social attitudes, and with them the cycles of discontent which we witness in the US as a result of such inequality. James Baldwin wrote that people pay for what they do, but even more for what they will allow themselves to become. Segregation and desegregation are painful and ugly processes. Is this what we wish to become? Thank you. A question from the judges? I'm going to jump forward on that one. Thank you for the presentation. Uh, can you tell us how has, uh, and whether it has, your own personal experience, family experience shaped the nature of the research that you, took, you decided to undertake? Yes. Um, I've been lucky enough. I was born in Nigeria, uh, raised in the States. I now live in Australia, in Clare. And, um, <laughs> and, um, uh, I did, quite honestly, I grew up in the South Bronx. I saw what schools looked like, but I was lucky enough to get a scholarship to attend a private uh, boys' school in New York City, in Manhattan, in the Upper West Side. And to be quite, to, to be really specific, it was while doing my master's work, I saw a New York Times article about progressive enclaves in America suffering from white flight and segregation. The school they listed was PS199. My school, I was bused there. At the same time, the Melbourne Age is talking about progressive enclaves in Melbourne, in Greens, Melbourne, facing the same issue. I asked myself why, what was linking these areas? Um, I also realized, too, that um, I've been a teacher for almost 20 years, um, and when I talk about policies fixing, messing with parents and schools, they, 
they also affect us and the jobs that we must do. As we've just seen in the annual theater that is the release of Ap Napland Greats. Um, I'm, it touches me, yes. 